ready, so let's walk him yeah. through. Welcome him to the front. Thank God for the blood, amen. Because the word says without the shedding of blood, there'd be no redemption. We would die in our sins. So thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Good to see all of you here tonight. I'm glad we are gathered together in fellowship in this fashion. Because having fellowship together in Christ Jesus is one of the most glorious things that we can do. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. All right. I know you're out there. I hear you breathing. <laughs> and so I want to speak about fellowship. That's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about fellowship because it's so important to understand and know about fellowship. Okay? A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to go and have fellowship with the brothers and sisters Christ. I'm going to have fellowship here and have fellowship there. We they don't really know about fellowship. Amen? It's important to understand fellowship. So let me give you the definition of fellowship. Amen? It is a friendly association, especially with people who share one's interests. So it's got to be the same interest, right? I mean, it's kind of hard to fellowship. I mean, you can. It's kind of hard to fellowship with somebody whose thoughts and ways are contrary to, to yours, right? We didn't have much to really talk about. The Hebrew word for it is tesodah. Tesodah. I might not be pronouncing exactly right, but it's tesodah. Why is that important to understand it in Hebrew? Because Hebrew says that also fellowship means a pledge. It means a pledge, a solemn promise or undertaker to do something. What a solemn promise. It also means security. It also means security, the state of being free from danger or threat. So we're in, in fellowship in, in we are in agreement with each other. We are in the state of being free from danger or threat. I mean, if you're if you got common, if you got the same interests and the same ideas, then you got nobody who's threatening you. So it's security. It also means uh, a deposit, which is a place where we deposit something into the bank or we just deposit something into the safe, right? It is a place for safe keeping. So when we're in a proper type of fellowship, we are safe. The Greek word for fellowship, oh boy, I know I'm, I know I'm not messing this up, but we'll get an idea here. And no, I know we don't speak Hebrew, I know we don't speak Greek, but there's a purpose why I'm saying the words. Ke nan ia. Ke nan ia. Which in the Greek fellowship is an association, a community, a communion, a joint participation. Communication or dealing between individuals or groups. In other words, all said and done, fellowship means to share which one has anything. So all that we have when we get into fellowship, we're to share with each other. That's why when we come together, we encourage each other in the Lord. We want to speak life. We don't want to bash each other. That's not a good thing. God doesn't like us to bash each other. God doesn't want us to look upon each other and start judging about the way we dress, the way we act, the way we, we talk. Now, sometimes someone that's new in Christ might not act, dress, or speak in a way that you think they should, but we all are learning to do rightly. And as long as what we speak, say, and do is to do to glorify and honor God, then we should all be in agreement in that interest, right? Because we're all, we are all in unity, but we're wired differently. And that we all got, we all got a calling to God, but we might have a different calling. Amen. So, fellowship is people who have things in common or share, like sharing a belief or an interest or a thought or an idea. Okay. And that means that you can be in agreement on playing the game, studying the word, or whatsoever that you are in agreement and in, in unity with. So, 
Go to John 14, 30. John 14, 30. John 14, 30 is yet, still, hereafter. I read the hereafter, which means yet or still. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. He's fixing to go to be with the Father. Okay? So don't fix to go to be with the Father. So hereafter, or yet or still, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world, the prince, of course, of Satan, the devil, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Jesus said, I'm fixing to get out of here because the prince of this world is coming, Satan, the devil, and he doesn't have anything in common with me. We don't share anything together. We have no unity together. We have no interest together. So he has nothing in me. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to be the same way. We need to follow the example of Christ Jesus. We need to get into the Word and get the Word into us and walk like Jesus walked. Yes. The Amen. Word says that if we abide in Him, we should walk in as He walked. Now, I know we can't walk a perfect, perfect line. I, I got that. But we're to follow the example because He gave us an example of what we can follow. Amen. All right? So we would not have no fellowship with Satan. Or his cronies. I call them cronies. You can call them devils. You can call them demons. You can call them evil spirits. But I don't have anything, and you and I should not have anything in common with the devil nor with his cronies. All right? Amen. No fellowship. Nothing common. And nothing shared. Amen? Amen. But we do because, because we're in the flesh, and sometimes we get out of line. I've got it. Then we need to confess quickly. Because the Word of God... 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he, being God, is just and righteous to forgive us of all of our sins. And guess what else he says? And I will throw your iniquities as far as the east from the west, which means it continually goes. Amen. And throw your iniquities in the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more. So see, we've got a way out of it. When we, when we stumble and fall, God will pick us up. We just need to repent. Psalm 68, 1. Psalms 68 1. I don't know about you, but I love, I love living for the Lord. I love having fellowship with Jesus. I love having fellowship with God's people. Amen. We're not perfect. We're all learning. We have to encourage each other. That's right. We have to love each other and pray for each other, lift each other up, encourage each other. Speak like to each other. When we're out of line, all we have to do is help each other. Just speak the word. Just speak the word and encourage each other. Don't blast, don't blast each other. We're all learning. We, we're all walking. We're all walking in a in a world that is dying, and a world that is going to decay and is decaying. A world that is going to one of these days is going to be burned up and go away, and a new heaven and a new earth is coming. And as long as there's sin in this world, we're going to have issues here. We need to help each other through those issues, not, well, not bash each other. I, I can't stand bashing. I can't stand the Baptist bashing, the Methodist the Baptist bashing, the Pentecostal, the Pentecostal bashing, whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yes. We, we need to be encouraging and loving one another. We're not supposed to be doing that. That's that's not unity. That's separation. That's what, that's what Satan wants. Because when we're separated and out of fellowship, then we don't have no power. We have no power. Jesus' power, because he'll step back from us, and we won't have his power with us. And we have power to tread on to tread on the scorpions. We have power to tread on the serpents. We have power to tread on the lions. And we have power over all the power and authority of the enemy. Yes. But we have to be in unity. Amen. And we have to be in fellowship with God. Amen. With it. Amen. So Psalm 68.1 says, and I love this, I love this, 68, uh, verse 1 is all I'm going to do. It says, let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Now listen, I looked this up, I studied it, I prayed about it, I seek Holy Spirit on it. 
So, it says, let God arise, let the enemies be scattered. And that means thrown, thrown, thrown in various <coughs> random directions. Take an enemy and throw them. Because he's got enough, they got nothing in us. They got nothing in Jesus. So they are thrown in various random directions. They're dispersed. Alright? They're disturbed. They are they are spread over a wide area. Anywhere but here. But anywhere but in you. Anywhere but around you. Anywhere you cannot be around the people of God if we're living for God, if we have fellowship with Him. Amen? Amen. Scattered. Let them also that hate Him. He said, let them also be scattered. Let them also that hate Him flee before Him. Flee means to put the flight. To put the flight. I don't know about you, but when I think of flight, I'm thinking in, in the air. Alright? All right? So we can put them to flight. We can kick them in the head. We can kick them or we can knock them out. We can put them into flight. But we got to do it with the Word of God and with the power and authority that Christ Jesus gave us by having fellowship with Him. And, and also it means to cause to disappear. To cause to disappear. Alright? I love it. I love it. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. I love the Word of God because the Word of God is our blueprint as to how we live for Christ and how we can have fellowship with Him and how we can have the power, power and authority over the enemy. First John 1 5 says, This is the message which we have uh, heard of Him and declare, that means to make known, it is to be made known, the message is to be made known unto you, unto us, the brothers and sisters through Christ. That God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. See, God is light. Everybody say, God is light. God is light. Now, Satan is the darkness, because Satan's heart is evil. He's a liar. He's a destroyer, and he likes to use us in despair. So he is darkness, and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus came that we might have life Amen. in that life of Jesus and have it more abundantly. So when we walk in light, brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, when we walk in light, darkness cannot be around us. Darkness is denied. Darkness is denied. Think about it. Pastor Roger did one. I wasn't here for that night. But I heard about it, and I've seen that example before. He had all the lights turned out. So it was dark. And I believe he turned on a small light or something. And it doesn't matter. You can turn, you can turn out all these lights, every light. You won't do it. You turn out every light, stand in the corner, and light just a match. And, and tell me, can everybody see that light when you just light a match, even yes. though the whole room is full of darkness? Yes. Of course, because the darkness is denied. It has no authority in the light. Jesus is our light. If you have Jesus, you have light. Amen? Amen. So we are the light of Jesus. Jesus is our light. And the devil has nothing in us because darkness is denied when we walk in the light. Amen? Amen. Amen. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm glad to see everybody here tonight, and I'm glad for those who will be tuning in on, on Facebook and YouTube later on. I pray that you get something out of this. I pray that it will encourage your heart. I pray that it will strengthen you in the Lord as we encourage one another. John chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 1 through 13 kind of quickly. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That life, we got the life of Jesus in us. See, every, every breath we take is his breath in us. Amen? And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. They can't, the darkness cannot comprehend us. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light, of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was, to, it was, but was sent to bear witness of the light. We had the light shining us, and we're to bear witness of the light by showing them the light in us and speaking about the light in us. Amen. Amen. That was the true light, which uh, lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, his own people. He was Jewish, he came to his own people. He was in the real world, and the world was made by him, the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And if you look up that word sons, in Hebrew and in the Greek, it means both man and woman, children and adult, mankind, if you will. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And I'm going to go to verse 14. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we behold his glory. The glory is the only begotten of Father, full of grace and truth. We which Christ our Lord and Savior, and the life, and the life of our, of our life. Amen. John 1, 4 says... Light, that's Jesus, is the light of man. That light, that light is the light of man. So get happy. So get happy. Get happy. The light of Jesus Hallelujah. Is. That's right. Wow. John 1 5 says, The darkness does not comprehend the light. Comprehend means cannot lay hold of or understand it. The devil can't even understand us. His crookies can't even understand us when we walk in the light. Amen. Because they can't stand the light. They can't comprehend it. Amen. He said, wait a minute now. They all used to be in the presence of God. Not in their fallen state anymore. They don't have that fellowship. They don't have that fellowship, so they don't have the understanding of fellowship anymore. Amen. God is love. God is light. God is light in us. Perfect love casts out fear. Amen. Fear is that That's darkness right. from God. The man, I mean, the, the fear is that darkness from the devil. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> First Colossians, I mean, Colossians 1 9. I don't think that's the verse, but let me read the verse. All right. It says, God is faithful by whom ye were called. You were called by God. He's faithful. Anybody here called by God? Yes. We should all be saying it. Yeah, yeah, all right yeah. according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. On to, okay, God is faithful by whom you were called. On to the fellowship, the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Into the fellowship, into the friendly association, especially with people who share one's interest. So we share the interest in Jesus. Fellowship. Of his son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right? All right. Amen. I'm the only one getting happy here. I'm happy. All right. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. I want you to know, and I want us all to know and understand the importance of true fellowship, true loving fellowship, and that should be yes, with Jesus. That's right. Because when we step away from our fellowship with Jesus, we have turned out the light. Some people say, and I've heard this, says, I know God wouldn't approve, but I'm going to do it anyway. Well, when we do that, we shut off all the lights. We have in the darkness, 
And we've separated ourselves from, from Jesus. We separate ourselves from God. Perfectly, not we repent, come back. And not we repent of our sins. But why until we repent? We are in darkness. Amen. And we have a fellowship right. with the devil and his thrones and not with Jesus. Alright? So Acts chapter 2, I'm going to start with verse 38. I'm going to read a few verses here. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everybody should, I pray that everybody here, if you haven't already desired to, to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, because, woo, and you get the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost, you have even more power. Amen. All right? Uh, for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words that he testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourselves from this untowered generation, this bad, evil generation, this darkness of this world, if you will. <coughs> and they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly, listen to this, this is, this is what I'm emphasizing here, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine which is the doctrine of Jesus Christ, and fellowship, and breaking of bread, and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul. And that, that fear means reverence, reverence to God, respect to God, obedience to God. And fear came upon every soul. Amen. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and this is this, and had all things common. And then had all things common. That's how we keep in fellowship with Jesus. We have everything in common with each other and with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Acts 2.42 says, Continued steadfastly in fellowship. That means to adhere to one. Sticking fast. Sticking you ever stick anything to anything, anybody? Yes. yes. Sticking fast to and believe in or, or follow the practice of what we believe in, what we stand on. Our faith, if you will. Our Amen. life in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Acts 1. Acts 1, 13 and 14. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, and there awoke both Peter and James, and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. Not the Judas Iscariot, okay, but the Judas the brother of James. Listen to this. They all continued with one accord. In prayer, one accord means together. In, in agreement. In prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brother. Listen, if we all got together, if every person who confessed and are born again Christian, whether they have the gift of the Holy Spirit or not, it's better to have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Whether it's not, but they're a born-again Christian. If we all broke down the walls of denominations, broke down the walls of, of uh, they believe this or they believe that, and get into the agreement of what we have in common, salvation through Christ Jesus, redemption through his blood, right. and start praying for this world, things will begin to change. Amen. That's right. People will begin to change. Amen. Situations will begin to change. Amen. People will get rescued. People will get saved. Hallelujah. People Amen. will make right decisions. And people Glory. will be blessed and delivered. And people Amen. will be set up on high. And when we do that, when our light shines, we stand up high to the Lord. 
People take notice of that. They see that light. Until they get the light, they're a little scared of the light because they don't fully understand the light. But they do see the light because, like I said, you turn out all these lights, stand up here on the stage in the corner somewhere, and, and just light a match. They'll be drawn to this. Well, let me tell you something about that. You see, your light, my light, should be a light up, like on a city. So we should be light so much that we're so bright like a city that people can see us. When they see our works, our good works, okay, the work, not, not for our works to get salvation. That's not what that's about. But the good works of the Lord that brings honor and glory to him. Because then when we go in the darkness, we do things we're not supposed to do. We turn out the lights get separated from God. And we try to tell people we're Christians. We're not living for Christians. We give the occasion for the world to blasphemy God. And say, see, they're no different than me. If that's the God you serve, I don't need them. I'm already like that. Amen. We are the body. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be good. We, we are the body. You are the body of Christ. And we are perfectly joined together. Perfectly joined together. Everybody is wired differently. Everybody has got a calling upon them. And we work together like a body. People with the eyes, people with the hands, people with the feet, people or whatever. Right. Joints, muscles, whatever it might be. And we work together. Some people are preachers, some people are teachers, some people are apostles, some people are prophets, some people are evangelists, some, some people serious. have the gifts of discernment, of wisdom and knowledge, and some people have uh, uh, the gift of healing. Whatever it is, we work together as a body. So let me let me give a little bit of an example to this. All right. Okay. So note that the hands. All right. The hands hold things, touches things, touches things and people. So the hands of the people encourage the ones that are hands encourages the church. To have a hold on Jesus oh, and not man. let go. Amen. And then we encourage us and how to hold on to Jesus. You gotta hold on to Jesus. I understand you're going through the trials, I understand you're going through the tribulations. I understand that the enemy's trying to pull you down, but if you hold on to Jesus, he'll pull you up, he'll deliver you out of all the miry clay, he'll deliver you out of the sinking sand, he'll lift you up, he'll put you on a rock. The rock of salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And he will lift us up, and he will honor us, and he will bless us with long life. If you just hold on to Jesus. Amen. Just hold on to Jesus. Don't let go. Thank you no Lord. matter how many times the enemy throws a fire dart at you, you have your shield of faith, and you can quench it. Just put your trust and faith in God and hold on to him. We encourage each other. The hands will do that. Feet. That walk to be to they walk to things or to people. So the feet keep or encourage the church to keep walking with the Lord and keep walking with Christ Jesus. Don't walk. listen when you get tired and weary. If you walk with Jesus, you get tired and weary. Jesus will pick you up and he'll carry you. Amen. He will carry you and he will strengthen you. And he will help you to walk the walk. We gotta walk the walk and talk the talk. We can't just talk the talk. We gotta walk Amen. the walk. We gotta encourage each other to walk Amen. with the Lord and walk with Jesus. Amen. Yes. The eyes. The eyes see things. The eyes see people. And the eyes keep or the eyes encourage the church to keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on Jesus. But they was in the boat, and it was storming, and it was raining, and the wind was blowing, and the apostles was in the boat, and they was being being rocked back and forth like a drunken person, rocking back and forth and going forward, and the wind was blowing and everything. And Jesus walked on the water, and he walked up to him. They thought it was a spirit at first, but Jesus said, "Don't." Fear, it's me. 
is Jesus. Don't fear in the storm. That's right. Jesus is there. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, invite me to come out and walk with you. He said, come on. I'm paraphrasing, but he said, come on. Amen. And Peter got out and he started walking on the water towards Jesus. And then he put his eyes on the wind. He put his eyes on the wool, on the waves. He put his eyes on the storm. And he started to sink. And he said, help me, Lord. And the Lord, of course, is always, when we're sinking, in sinking sand or miry clay, when we call upon the Lord for help, he's going to pull the hand out. Look at that picture right there. Just Amen. like that, he's going to pull us out, Ooh, out of there. And he said, you have little faith. Why did you not believe? Why did you not keep your eyes on me? If he would have kept his eyes on Jesus, if we'll keep our eyes on Jesus, we will not be as disturbed in the storm. But if we call out to God, call out to Jesus, he will rescue us out of the storm and put us on Amen. dry land. And put us on the rock. His rock. He's the rock. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. The ears. The ears hear things, and they hear, and the ears hear people. Right. You know how I always say things to have people, because it's people and the situations that we're talking about. Because situations is what we deal with, but we're the people who deals with the situation, and if Jesus takes us and brings us through. Every trial and tribulation and teaches us patience and shows us that we lack wisdom. And so, therefore, with faith, without wavering or being double minded, we ask for that wisdom and he gives it to us. And guess what? There's an escape through the same trial that we started in. Amen. The ears hear things in people, the ears encourage the church to hear and obey. Only the voice of the Lord. He says, my, Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. Lord, help us to hear the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Father God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and to reject any other voice. How do we know which voice it is? We know by getting into the Word of God and knowing right. the Word of God. Amen. And know that the voice of the Lord will direct us in a peaceful way. And give us a choice. The voice that is not of the Lord will demand us to do it. What they, what that voice demands us to do. But you will do it. If you don't do it, you're gonna die. Some, some voice, there's a voice. I, you got to it. I don't know if you were angry. You, you don't do this, you're gonna die. I ain't gonna die. You know why? Because my God is the God of life. Yes. I Amen. Got death. See, when Jesus Amen. shows up, things change. See, Jesus yes. came. There was one dead, and he was in the back of like a wagon, kind of like a hearse back in those days. And Jesus rose up. There was a young daughter that died, and Jesus said, "My daughter, awake. Lazarus was dead in the tomb for four days." And he said, "Lazarus, arise." Amen. That's right. Somebody told me I thought this was pretty awesome. I like it. I like it. He said the reason why he had to call Lazarus' name is because, and then say, Lazarus, arise, because if he would have just faced the tombs and say, arise, everyone would arise. Ooh, that's everyone right. Would arise. Everyone would <laughs> arise. So he had to call up Lazarus. So the ears encourage the church to hear them, obey the voice of the Lord. And you know, we can go on and on. What is the what is the joint? What is the what is this part of the body do? What is that part of the body do? What do the toes do? What do the fingers do? We can go on with that. Fingers touch. Fingers touch. Jesus touched people. He and they got healed. Right. People made, he's made blood packs and touched the eyes and people got their sight back. See how you can go on and on Amen. with every part of the body? Right. Go to Matthew 12. I think we've got time for this. I'm going to make it kind of quick. And I'm going to start with verse 12, 26. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood without, desiring to speak with him. This is Jesus. He's in the crowd. He's in the building. Outside, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood without, desiring to speak with him. 
Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, and unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who is my brother? And he stretched forth his hand towards the disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brother. They were gathered around Jesus, sticking together. Remember I said sticking was part of the definition of fellowship? Yes. They were sticking together with Jesus. Hallelujah. That's his mother and father. That's his friend. That's his family. You got it? That's Amen. the family, the ones that are sticking with Ooh, him. Glory. With him. He says, if you follow my commandments, then that shows you love me. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's right. Because if we walk away from his commandments, then we walk in the darkness. Nobody that I want to walk in the darkness. When I found myself going in the darkness, I scream right away, just like just like Peter did in the storm and said, Lord help me. <laughs> Lord help me, and the Holy Spirit will convict you and you'll repent and you'll get right with God and they'll throw your throw your nicknames as far as he's for less and throw it and receive forgiveness from him no more. Amen. And when you later on say, Hey God, you remember one night he'll say no. That's right. Not because he had bad memory, but because he chose to throw the seed for kids. Amen. No That's right. Amen. Happened. Thank you, Lord. Right. It never happened. I love it. Amen. Love it. You ever seen those commercials? You remember the ones, uh, the steam cleaners? I don't yes. know if you remember the ones, the steam cleaners, when, they, when, when there was a flood came and the, the house kind of got destroyed. They got the steam cleaners. I don't remember the name of the company. Yeah. They go up there and they clean it up and it says, it's like it, it's like it never happened. Right. And we sin and we repent, the true repentance for the conquerors for the least. We're really are sorry for what we do and, and, and turn away from it. I used to say this, repenting, repenting is a military, it's a military command. And and it's it's like this, all right? We're marching and marching towards the sin. He says, about face, and you turn and go the other way. That's repenting, turning away from sin and going the other way. Amen. Jesus. That's right. And he rescues you out and he remembers it no more. See, he nailed our sins to the cross. Why would we want to go to the cross and start trying to pull our sins back off the cross? Amen? Amen. He done already ripped the, the he ripped the papers, the ordinance that was against us out of the hands of the enemy, and ripped it up and kept us free. Why would we want to go and get an ordinance of slavery back to the to the devil? Why would we want to? No. So I hope that I encourage your hearts tonight. I hope that you understand the importance of fellowship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd like to do this. I, I mean, because some of these prayers, we're going to pray for you. But I want to do this. I want to ask everybody to come up. You have something? Okay, yeah. The last verse in that um, 50. It says, for whoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, sister, and mother. So just like you were saying, we all are in one because we're unity right here. Yeah. Right. And that's, I'm right going to ask everybody, if you will, I'm not going to ask you to pray out loud or anything. I'm just going to ask you to come up, let us circle around, and get into fellowship and get into agreement while we pray. Be in agreement. That's all I'm asking. I'd like to be in agreement. 